Are you over 50 and looking for ways to stay pain-free and fit? Bob and Brad have searched the world to bring you the best of the best in stretching gurus. These seven experts have shared their top stretches to help you feel your best. And to top it off, expert number seven is the world's foremost authority on back health. So get ready to get flexible. All right, our first expert is Dr. Robert Schleep. His, uh, he's from Germany, and he has studied uh, fascial fitness, and that's actually the name of his book. He has a number of stretches and educational information on how to manage and keep your fascia so you are pain-free. Let's go to the stretch, just one of the stretches he recommends. To perform this stretch, you're going to need to lie next to a wall of sorts. You can be on your bed and your feet up on a wall, too, if that is more comfortable for you. I have placed a small pillow under my low back for a little more comfort. So once you're in this position, you're going to start bringing each foot out to the side as far as you can comfortably. This is going to stretch the adductor or inner thigh muscles here. And then you're going to bring your arms out to the side, getting a nice pec stretch. You can hold this for 30 seconds to 60 seconds. Robert likes to hold it for three to five minutes in his book and he just kind of lays here and relaxes. Now if you'd like a little bit more of an advanced stretch we'll get into that now using a foam roller. And I think we want to mention how the importance of relaxing and breathing. He does that humming uh, thing. We won't get into that. That's more advanced but really breathing to allow your body to relax. So for the advanced variation, I am laying on a foam roller here, and I'm going to bring my legs out to the side and get a good stretch. And then now if I bring my arms out to my sides, I get even more of a pec stretch, and my hands can touch the floor so I'm flexible enough here. Now Brad is going to hand me some weights, so if you want to get even more of a stretch, just hold the weights there, and then they'll really push things down. I can already hit the floor, so I'm not feeling much. But if you're tight, you might be sitting here and getting a stretch. Now this is for the advanced. Like I said, it's not for everyone, so don't do it if you can't even do the first variation. Did I forget anything? Well, I would just like to mention, as far as weights, you know, you're probably not going to start out with three pound, three pound dumbbells. Probably one pound is all you're going to need to get those pecs stretched. Do not do anything that's painful or uncomfortable. It should feel a nice, gentle stretch. Um, and again, this is advance and if you don't feel comfortable getting down on the floor this stretch may not be for you uh anyways we've got five or six more right yeah. and you can definitely pick different variations of angles with the pec stretch if you want to go up higher certainly can yeah it gets different fibers of that pec major so let's get in uh, stretch number two. That's right. So our next expert is Rick Olderman, a physical therapist from Colorado. His recent book, Solving the Pain Puzzle, Cases from 25 Years as a Physical Therapist, is available now. He also has programs on how to work on different body parts and ailments you may have. So his stretch I'm going to show here is commonly known as a child's pose. He calls it all four rocking. To get in the position here, I'm going to bring my knees out wide. My feet are touching. You can bring your feet out whatever comfortable for your hip position. I'm going to keep my hands planted into the mat and then I'm going to push back into a seated position like I'm kneeling. So this is going to stretch my hips, my knees, it's getting a good shoulder stretch and it just feels good overall. I'm going to hold this for three to four breaths and then I'm going to rock forward again and then come back into it. You can do this for repetitions or if you just like to sit here for 30 seconds to a couple minutes, go ahead and breathe slow. Yeah, I'd like to mention this. Is that okay if I, sp if I talk, Mike? Yeah. yeah. The, the, sca the uh, scapula, the shoulder blade, this is a really nice one to get that to move for that shoulder health as well. The nice lumbar stretch back in here. You can do this on your bed, but if your bed is really soft, it's may not work as well. On a floor or a cushion surface is probably the best. Uh, this can, oh, let, let's do, Bob just mentioned we should talk about emphasizing one right side or left side by crossing the arm. Go ahead. So if you want to emphasize one side, you can just bring, say, my left arm over to my right and then go down here. I'm going to feel much more stretch on my lat and my left side here if I do this option as well. Now, if you can't get on your knees, Brad will show a nice seated option to do as well. 
So sit on a chair next to the table, a countertop, something of that nature. If you have a chair that has wheels, it actually helps out, but you don't need to, and you'll see why in just a second. So I'm gonna put my arms out here, and simply, the, here's where the wheel comes in handy, the wheels, and you stretch out like this. Now, we don't wanna keep our head up like this, right? We wanna no. keep it down this neutral position. Take your three or four breaths in your nose, exhale out your mouth is the way I prefer to do it for better relaxation. Come back up and you can also cross to emphasize the stretch on one side. This would be my right, this would be my left. If you don't have wheels, you can actually put your hands and just slide your hands forward. My hands are a little sticky here. Sometimes on a smooth countertop, you can put a towel down and it slides right across smooth and work it that way. Don't bump your head on the countertop. <laughs> that uh, negative results are with that. So very good. That's a nice stretch. It really makes you feel good, wakes you up. All right, our third guest is a expert on spinal stenosis, spine health. Her name is Terry Knight. She's done an excellent book. Bob highly recommends her work as well as I do. I have spinal stenosis. I've read this book and it's been a great help to me. We're going to show you a stretch that works out very well and uh, we'll get on with it. She is from California. Yes, yeah, so we just learned that. <laughs> So this exercise is called the cat-cow or cat-camel, some people refer it to as, and Brad is going to demonstrate it for us. That's right. I don't get concerned about the cat-cow or antlers or whatever it is, but <laughs> if you do this on your bed, it's going to be a little difficult. It's too soft. It's best to do it on the floor, carpeted floor. A firm bed would be best if that's the case. And we're just going to arch the back up like this and round it. If you have stenosis like I do, this feels pretty good. And then she also wants to maintain the arch of the low back so that you remain, that remain with uh, good motion that way. If it doesn't feel good like me, eh, it doesn't feel real good, but I'm gonna bump into it a little bit and then I'm gonna go back up to here, hold, and then back down to here. Now the thing she likes to do is actually when you get up to here is actually move around a little bit and I can definitely, on my right side, this feels like a nice stretch, opening up those facet joints. And then over here, and you're gonna do this in whatever way you feel a good, healthy stretch. And if I go straight like this, I'm very happy. So very good, and you can work that as long as you'd like, and then go back to this, because we don't want to eliminate or reduce the arch in your back. We wanna maintain the range of motion as long as you can. Mike? I think you did a good job explaining that. So go on to the next stretch. Next, number five? Four. Five, four. Okay. Three, two, one. Our next expert is Dr. Mark Kukazella. He is a wonderful person. He wrote this book. It's called Run for Your Life. Now, if you're not a runner and you read this, you are going to find at least half the information pertains to anybody 50 and older on how to be active, pain-free, and continue to live a healthy and happy life. So we're going to show you this stretch. Mike, go right ahead. So he actually runs a shoe store in West Virginia as well, where he sells all minimalistic shoes or wide toe box shoes for people for foot health as well. That's right. Actually, I bought some from his, and they do custom. You talk to them and tell them information, you'll get the right two river treads right. so we're gonna get into stretch it's called the bretzel stretch so it sounds like pretzel but it's with a b so to start it you're gonna lay on your side to begin i'm gonna bring my top leg over top like this and flex it my knee to my chest roughly like this now my back leg i'm gonna try to keep straight and then i'm gonna bend my knee up to my hand and i'm gonna pull back at the same time Ooh. then i'm gonna take this arm bring it out to the side, and slowly rotate this way. Now, Dr. Mark says he loves just sitting here for three to five minutes. If this feels like a lot to you, you could start with 30 seconds and work your way up over time. Also, some people might be so tight in their hip flexor on the bottom leg here that you're gonna need a belt or something to reach this. So simply lasso it around your ankle and then you can pull it up this way as well. A Little more relaxing on my right arm and this feels nice, and this stretches a whole lot. Do you want to show what it's stretching? Bruce? Yeah, it's a good point. We're getting on the right hip. We're getting some excellent stretching in that, and the flexors and the abductors, the quadriceps are doing 
getting stretched very well here, as well as the hip flexors on that point. Look at the rotational component throughout the spine. We're getting stretched through this pectoralis major. Now, we're going to do both sides, right? Yes, yeah, so you want to do this both ways, but then I won't be facing the camera. So relax and breathe once again. Hold it for 15 to 30 seconds. Progress as tolerated. Uh, anything else, Mike? Let's go on to stretch number five. Excellent choice. Our next expert is Dr. Yoav Supran. He's actually from Israel, but now resides in Florida. He wrote this book on aging without aching. Wonderful book. He has studied under Dr. Robin McKenzie, who is now deceased, but he's developed a back method for over 40 countries that's in now the system. Uh, so we're going to show a stretch from him. So hold on one second, and we'll go for it. So the exercise or stretch we're going to do is a back extension in standing. So extension means simply bringing your back backwards away from you or extending your spine. To do this, you typically want to go up to a taller countertop. We don't have one here. We just have this bench. Something that is going to hit your belt line roughly here. So I'm going to put my hands on my hips, and I'm going to just arch back like this. Feel a good stretch and then come forward. This feels really nice. Good. And how many repetitions? You can do 10 repetitions. Just do this throughout the day because it's going to get your spine a little more motion and mobility and ease that pain you may be having. Right. I do want to mention with this one, if you have problems sitting for long period of times or you're just sitting at work or in a car driving, this is a good one to do at least three to five repetitions before you sit. And then when you get up, do it again. One thing that also works well if you don't have a countertop or something to lean up against, a simple towel roll works very good. Put it right in the area. Now, the height you put it at is going to depend on you. You put it where it feels best. And you will find out after you adjust it where it feels good. For me, it's going to be right about there from my experience. And I'm going to go back. If you have stenosis, this may be uncomfortable and you will not want to do it. I have a mild stenosis. I don't do it a lot and I don't hold it very long. I just kind of work it so I maintain that range of motion. Really good exercise, simple to do and easy to fit throughout the day without interruption. Oh, we'll be here now. Yeah, on to number six. Excellent. Our next expert is Brad Walker. He is an expert on stretching. He is from Australia. The name of the book we're getting this is from is called The Anatomy of Stretching. Uh, he has some other books more specific to athletes. Uh, this stretch we have over here. Oh, I wanted to mention this book is excellent if you want it because he has excellent uh, photographs and uh, diagrams so you get the stretch done properly and which muscles it's specifying. Very functional book for anyone. Mike, let's go to the stretch. So we're going to stretch the backside, your low back and buttock and hips a little bit with this stretch. So it's basically just a trunk rotation. So I'm going to put my arms out to the side. I'm going to have bent knees and a flat back. Then I'm going to let both legs just drop down to one side if that's comfortable for you. Some people might be tight and be stuck up here, that's fine. Just try to hold it here, 15 to 30 seconds. Come back to center, reset your back, and then you're gonna make sure to work both directions. You may notice one side is tighter than the other, so stretch that side a little bit more. All right, I would like to mention a couple key points. You can see what how Mike is holding this shoulder down while this hip goes up. Now, some of you may be too tight and that might come up. That's okay. Don't stretch it too aggressively. This should not create any pain. Sometimes when you go one direction, it might be painful. The other direction may not be painful. So stretch the side that is pain-free and just gently bump into the pain side. After a period of time, and when I say time, I'm talking to maybe days or weeks, the painful side should loosen up. He's got his knees together and his feet together. That's a common mistake when people come over and across. They separate their feet and their knees separate. Here, get over here, Mike, so they can see. Opening their knees up like that. Yeah, that's sloppy. We will not have any of that. This is proper stretching. So, good. Nice stretch. This is one we've worked at. Bob and I and Mike have taught patients over the decades. Well, Bob and I decades 
Well, you don't have any two decades. One yet. decade. One decade. All right. Good luck, and we got one more to go. Our last expert comes from the land of Canada, and his name is Stuart McGill. He wrote the book Back Mechanic, and he is one of the experts in back pain. Right. That's right. He's Dr. Stuart McGill. He's got his PhD, and he has extensive research on the spine supporting all of these exercises. You know it's good information when it comes from him. He's got a number of books for uh, students and professionals as well as a layperson. So we're going to get into the stretch now. So for this stretch, you're going to need a chair and kneeling on the floor. Brad will next show a variation seated if you're unable to get into this position. So this is going to work on your th thoracic and lumbar spine again. So you're going to get in a kneeling position. I'm going to rest my elbows on the chair. And then I'm going to interlace my fingers behind my head. As I'm doing this, I'm pushing my elbows into the chair. And then I'm going to start arching my back like this. Now I feel a good stretch. You want to hold this for at least 10 seconds. If you're still feeling a good release, you can hold it for longer and then relax. And make sure to perform three sets of this at least 10 second holds and get a nice thoracic extension there. Oh, you can hear him grunt. So he's got his head up. And I want to mention this really does a nice stretch on the scapula as well as the shoulder joint itself. Okay, in the seated position, you'll want to go to a countertop or a tabletop. Now, this is lower than most countertops. I'm going to put a few inches of cushion on there so it's a little more realistic. And that is about the right height right there. So right there, about at the hip. Okay, and the same thing, elbows here, interlace behind the head. If you have a chair with wheels, it is helpful. Not necessary, though. And you'll see I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to arch. Arch, look up, arch. Oh, I feel a nice stretch in them shoulders. I like it there. And because I have stenosis, I cannot arch very far like Mike, but it's still a good stretch. No pain. If you develop pain at all, you're going too far, or maybe this isn't the stretch for you. 10 seconds, and I'm ready to get back up. And I'm going to go like this because I'm almost off my chair. If you have a chair that does not, you won't have that problem that doesn't have wheels. And then you can simply slide, but put a towel on the tabletop or the countertop so your elbows slide forward and back up. So that becomes the motion of stretch. Yeah, that's a nice stretch. I'm feeling younger already, Mike. So we traveled all around the world to get those seven stretches. Pick what stretch feels best for you. And if you want to learn more information about any of those people, we'll link everything down below pinned to the first comment if you want to check out any of their books or possibly even interviews we've done with them. But wait, Mike, but oh, wait, there's oh. more. Six countries we went, different continents, as well as we actually talked to personally to all of these on podcasts, which we have, as well as the podcasts on YouTube, so you can actually see these people talk. They're wonderful people. You can tell they're absolutely true doctors and want people to be better. Take care, and off eater, Zane. <laughs>